What's up, Fort Knox? Welcome back to my channel. I am Riley Knox. For those of you who don't know that are new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe. I have all kinds of content going on on my channel. And um, it's funny because what I'm going to show you guys today or what I'm going to do today is actually something that I don't typically do on my channel. And a lot of you guys don't really know this, but I'm absolutely obsessed with interior design. I actually used to be an interior designer right now. And you know, in the recent years, I've been known as being the top Beyonce impersonator in the world. And a lot of you know me for being on stage, but for people who've known me for years and that even knew me since I was a kid, know that I have a background in art and interior design. I paint, I draw. Actually, this painting behind me, I painted and it's actually for sale. Um, I'm going to do a gallery pretty soon, but right now just that painting is for sale uh, because what I'm doing today is I'm going to do a gallery wall behind my sofa. And this is actually going to be the start of a new series that I'm doing on my channel, which is basically me getting my home together. Um... I will eventually do a, a home tour. Or we'll do a penthouse tour, but uh, for um, you guys, and it'll be really fun. But I've decided to redecorate, and I will show you guys the old way um, that it is. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of different things, so it'll be an ongoing thing. You guys will see in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but I really wanted to basically show you guys the artistic background that I have. I mean, I've been you know, I've designed many homes. I'll put in some pictures um, here. I've designed homes and boutiques and uh, rooms for people. I actually started doing interior design when I was, well, I've been interested in it to, as far back as I can say, about eight years old. I've drawn and painted and always built things. And I used to actually build model homes um, out of cardboard, but they were gargantuan. They were huge nuts. Um, so a lot of you people who are watching that knew me when I was younger um, can attest to this. But uh, my first interior design project was my aunt who um, had, rest in peace, my aunt who I loved so much, was my favorite aunt and we were very close and she used to design her home all the time and redo things. And I would go over her house and she would be redecorating and um, and she would let me help her and I would, you know, give her ideas and she'd give me, like she'd show me how to do things. And her house actually caught on fire and her kitchen burned completely. They had to gut her kitchen. And so around about, I must have been about 15 or 16 years old, I actually redesigned her kitchen. I sketched it out. I painted it. I mean, I, I sketched it out, colored, and um, basically did the whole blueprint at 16 years old for her kitchen. And that kitchen actually still remains today. She's passed on, but her kitchen is still the, just as I left it, as I designed it. So that was my first job. And then I ended up doing um, things here and there, and I opened my own interior design firm. Uh, back in like 2000, I think, what was it, 2008 or or something like that. Um, but what happened is a recession hit and people were not paying people to design pillows and, and pick out curtains and stuff for their house. So, you know, luckily somewhere after that, my career as an entertainer uh, took off and I was able to become successful in that. But my love for interior design never stopped. And probably one day when I, um, when I uh, quit this, not quit or retire from, from entertaining because I won't be able to do it forever. I'm sorry, guys, I won't. But when I retire from doing interior design, I will definitely, I'm not interior design, from performing, I'll definitely go back into maybe not interior design, but becoming a real estate developer. I actually designed, um, last year I designed a home and gutted and redid, like designed everything down to every little detail. And I love doing this thing. But it's time for me to do my own home. So today I'm actually going to um, do a um the wall behind my sofa i've been wanting to do a gallery of different things photography which i l dabble in a little bit i'm gonna it's gonna be a mix of in of photography um sketches that i've done um some art that i i found that i like um things that just basically like a gallery that's kind of like a tribute to who i am and what i love the things that i love um this wall is black well actually my you guys will see my entire apartment is my, well, my living room anyway is black. I live in the penthouse of a luxury building um, in DC um, and it is uh, a very modern aesthetic and very different from how I've lived before. There's a lot of light that comes in here because it's made of glass. And uh, so, 
you know, um, it's fun living up in a penthouse, uh, but it's very bright. So the walls are black because I do like a dark, like kind of more masculine aesthetic to how I design um, with some girly accents here and there. But um, what I'm doing today behind my sofa is going to be very reflective of who I am. So I decided that I was going to go to Ikea and get these because I feel like Ikea is definitely the best place to get a lot of um, picture frames for just very little money. And um, I spent less than like a little, maybe a little over a hundred dollars for all these frames. As you can see, there's a lot of frames here and um, various sizes. I haven't decided I'm going, I'm going to do some of them gold and some of them um, black and maybe some of them white or just gold and black or just all black. So I've painted them out. So I haven't actually gotten the artwork to go into them or the pictures to go into them. But I, what I decided is I'm going to arrange them first and then figure out what I want to put in them so that I get a good mix of everything and where everything is going. I'm basically going to treat the wall as one big art piece, but it's really just several different pictures. And um, you guys will see how I do this. Again, I'm getting rid of the painting behind me. Um, and I painted it originally for myself to go in my bedroom and then I decided to do something different in my bedroom. It's a very, very large piece. It's about five feet tall. Um, it's taller than me. It's or as, well, no, I'm taller than five feet tall. What am I talking about? It's almost taller than me. I'm five, six. So, um, it's a very big piece. So if you're interested in this piece, hit me up, um, in my DMs on Instagram. That's Riley Knox on Instagram. Um, it's better that you live in the DMV area because I do not want to ship this to anyone. So, I mean, I will if I have to, but I will have to charge you shipping because <laughs> it's going to take a lot to ship this piece. <laughs> but, um, this is going to be fun, and I'm so excited about this because this is really my passion. This is where I thrive. Art, entertain, art, entertainment I love, but art and design was my first love. So come along. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> So the first thing I've done is I've mapped out the section behind the sofa that I want to put the general area of where I want the pictures to go. Don't worry about this being completely straight. It's just a general area. Of course, we want the pictures to be level, but this is basically just saying that nothing that is on the outside of this will have pictures. So basically all the pictures will be within this general area here. And it's pretty much like the inset of the sofa. I measured it out. Um, but nothing will be higher than that and nothing will run over that. And basically that's just a general area. And so basically it's like having an art piece that is this big full size of this wall behind this sofa. Eventually I'm going to get a new sofa because this one was custom made, but it's really not my style anymore. I'm not into this tufting. It was something I was into back when I was into some more glam design. And I've always been into like a 70s style like genie lamp, but I'm going to replace that also. Um, but we're moving into a more modern aesthetic and I still, of course, love the black walls, but um, these walls have been painted a while ago, so they've cured. Um, but I'm just using painter's tape, which will not pull the paint off the wall anyway. And now I'm going to make a template for all the um, different frames that I have. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this really giant piece of paper. <laughs> I happen to have this paper left over from like it was a backdrop on a concert that I did. But um, you can use newspaper or just any kind of like brown paper, whatever. I'm going to trace out all the um, different sizes that I have and then I'm going to cut them out. And once I cut them out, I can stick them on the wall and move them around however I want to move them around. 
um, just basically until I get the desired design that I want. Um, but this makes it much easier than just bamming holes into a wall. I can space them perfectly. And yeah, so basically that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically trace the actual picture frame out. And then once I cut it, I'm gonna turn it around and figure out where the hole is. And I'm gonna put that hole right there on the paper so that I know where I need to hang the, where I need to hit the nail. Um, but really what I'm doing this for is to make sure I can get the collage going the way that I basically wanted to go. So I have traced out all of the frames and now it's time to cut them all out. This is a tedious process, but it is well worth it so that you get the exact look that you want and everything spaced perfectly. And then once I have done that, I'm going to mark on the back of the paper right where the holes are. If I want to hang it the long way or the short way. And then I'm going to take painter's tape, stick it to the wall, and kind of plan out how I want to place the frames. So just a side note. The wall color in my living room is a true black black. It's not charcoal gray. It's not kind of off black. It's a pure black. It's called Caviar by Sherwin-Williams. And the finish is in an eggshell. Uh, so it's not super shiny, but it's also not matte. Um, a lot of times people are scared to paint their walls black, especially in a small space, but I knew that I was going to be placing lots of things on the wall. So everything you place like these pictures, which have these white frames and the black frame, well, excuse me, the black frames and the white mats, those are going to really pop. So everything you place on there, whether it be like drapery or plants or even like this light colored sofa really pops off of the wall. I am going to be replacing the sofa as I said before simply because it's not only my, not my style anymore but it's really big and kind of clunky and I'm not really happy with the color of it gray is kind of over for me I used to do gray so much and so many people did gray and now gray is like over I either want a colored sofa or a darker sofa so that it kind of recedes into the wall and then I can add like pillows or whatever that'll cause it to really pop so you guys will be seeing that in the coming few months but for right now we're just doing this wall but I just wanted to note that because I know someone's going to ask what exactly is the color on the wall so that's the name of the color it's called Caviar by Sherwin Williams and it is a true black black <laughs> So I know this looks crazy right now, but <laughs> this is all level. It's going to be, it's just a, the really cool thing about the rib of frames from um, Ikea is you can do one hole or one nail and that will catch on the hook and it, you can kind of level it yourself because it's in the center. But this is how I planned it out and it's kind of... Um, I kind of like it. I do I like it a lot. It was very important to me that I had a good amount of clearance between the sofa and the um, the actual where the picture frames are hitting, uh, po possibly because I'm, you know, I need a little bit of negative space there, but also because I may be getting a sofa that is a little bit higher than the back of this sofa that's moved right here um, that I can't stand anymore. <laughs> I keep saying that. So, um Basically, um, the cool thing about these uh, frames is they're very modern, as you can see here. They're very modern, very sleek, so they won't detract. If you like a more modern aesthetic, it's really cool. Um, and also, they won't detract from what's actually in the frames. But I figured I'm going to hang them empty first. And so, um, but here's the other thing. This tape is a low tack tape, even though it's supposed to be edge lock. I don't know what's going on with the air or the heat or what's going on, but they are not sticking very long. So I have to hurry up and hammer the nails in straight through the holes that I made right here. Um, and once I do that, I'll see if I like it. Um, and hopefully I will, because this is the way that you avoid putting a bunch of holes in your wall. So let's get to hammering. 
So here's the thing about the Riba frames, as this one is upside down. Um, it's really cool because they used to come with glass, but now they come with plexiglass. So you still get the look of glass, but they're not as heavy on the wall. I do have like one or two that I've had for a while that do still have glass on them and a little bit heavier. But you also have to keep in mind that when you're getting these actual frames, you need to make sure that your artwork is not going to be... It's, it's going to be covered here, not off the edge, simply because they're kind of irregular. They're, they're not your standard matting. As you can see, it's thinner here and thicker here. Uh, so it's better that you choose the artwork that's going to go in here instead of framing something that's already a piece of artwork. I do have this mermaid print that was a gift from my friend Billy um, because I love mermaids, as trans women tend to love. Uh, but... She actually just happened to fit perfectly in there, which was great. But if she didn't, um, she would have been off the edge. But she fits in here absolutely perfect, so I'm really grateful for that. But th just so you know, this is like six 12 by 16, which most people's standard is like a 17 by 11, so it's slightly different. So just keep that in mind. Other, than, But I'm actually creating art to go in these frames, um, so we should be fine. hung I actually really like it um, I'm not sure I think I'm gonna go back and paint some of them like you said this one gold here like maybe the bigger one and I do need another one in this space right here maybe a smaller one or medium-sized one and I did nick the wall there where the other painting was leaning against the wall but I have some paint I'll touch that up um, but now I get a good feel a good sense of where everything's located so now I know what I want to put whether I want to put like photography architectural photography in one or a sketch in another or you know how I want to do it. like obviously we got the mermaid here that's already a sketch but like I'm going to do some sketches um I probably will take that one white one up there because it makes it look like it's higher than the rest because it's black but I because I do like the black on black I may paint that one or move it a slight bit because it looks like it's higher even though it's in the same quadrant or the same as you saw that I taped out before obviously this one's higher but that's on purpose I try to give them a certain amount of space in between at least three inches in between um but for the most part I like it and it's like a cool backdrop but also um I like that I hung them higher like they go all the way up to within about four inches from the ceiling because these are 10 foot ceilings and it gives a lot of height like it draws your eye up which is super smart um i'm gonna move the sofa back and we'll get a last look uh obviously not with the pictures in yet and i haven't even pulled off the plastic from the plexiglass but i'll do that whenever i when i put the uh pictures in but for right now um i kind of like it i like it a lot actually it's what i've been wanting to do for a while but um yeah i like it so this is the finished wall for now over the next couple months and weeks, you guys will see this wall change because I'm going to be putting the pictures in, obviously. And also new sofa, new table, new, just new, new, new. <laughs> Everything needs to change um, simply because I'm bored with it. I It's not my, really my style anymore. And um, this cowhide rug, by the way, I cannot stand um, because it simply sheds way too much. There's little white hairs all over the place. Um, the green pillows probably won't be staying, but this is not about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be changing this very shortly. You'll be seeing pictures going here, so I will give you guys an update. But for now, this is what it looks like. I'm really happy with the placement of the photos. So now that I know the placement, I can go and do some photography and select pictures that will go in these frames and where they're going to go. So they're spaced out evenly, which makes much more sense than just framing them all on the floor or something and then slapping them on the wall. So, yeah. 
Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.